Hi, I'm Irving. Welcome back to TV Fails, where we look at TV shows from my era that lasted one season or less. As we've seen, some shows deserved a short run, some didn't. I admit, I can't make up my mind about this one. I had never heard of Honey West. As so often happens, I have some viewers, more specifically patrons, to thank for introducing me to it. I was 12 when the show aired, so close-ups of Anne Francis' lips wouldn't have done much for me anyway. The character is based on a series of books from the 1950s. The character in the books is a female private detective, something unheard of at the time. Honey's father was a private detective until he was murdered in an alley, shot in the back. Honey had learned the business from watching him and took over his office. Her primary goal was to find her dad's killer, which, based on the books I was able to get my hands on, she never actually accomplished. To get a good image of the character, I was able to read all but two of the books. The Honey West of the series is the same. Took over her dad's business after he was killed. Nobody thinks a lady private eye is a good thing. Guys can't stop drooling over her whatchamadoodles. And the similarities pretty well end there. In the books, Honey doesn't have an actual sidekick. She has Lieutenant Mark Storm of the Police Department, who's hopelessly in love with her, even though she frustrates him enough that he wishes he could find an excuse to lock her up sometimes. He keeps begging her to get out of the business and marry him, which of course can never happen because the moment she hangs up her license and becomes Susie Homemaker, we have no more stories and hence no more books and hence no more royalties. The TV Honey West has a partner named Sam Bolt. Their relationship is strictly platonic, though they occasionally joke around. But you can tell their friendship is more important than any attraction either of them might or might not feel. In the books, Ms. West travels pretty light when she's on an assignment. Her only weapon is a small revolver that she keeps in a thigh holster under her skirt. To the best of my recollection, I don't think she ever actually fired it. What she really excelled at was getting bonked on the head and knocked out, followed by somebody relieving her of it, and when she woke, she'd have to try and find it. I sometimes wondered why she didn't sell the gun and buy a helmet. The Anne Francis version of Honey West has a few more items. In fact, well, suppose we follow the first rule of making a video, show, don't tell. Mrs. Mainwaring? Yes. You were smart to come alone. You left me no choice. This guy is blackmailing her about something. She gives him $50,000 and he gives her an envelope of some kind. All right. Now it's my turn, boys. Just get on over there. Nice and easy. That's fine. Now you just stay right there. Company will be here soon. <laughs> I'm telling you, gun, no good. Helmet, good. The guy takes her gun and the money and they all leave. An instant later, Sam pulls up. You and your ideas. No postmortems, just help me out. Did you get it? Like a hit in the head. She also sometimes likes dreadful puns. The real Mrs. Wainwright is their client. They recovered some items that the bad guys took from her, but they lost the money and didn't get the negative they were after. One cocktail, one dance. That's how they operate. They pick on a rich widow. A foolish widow. Or a married woman alone. You're sure it was the same man? He lighted a match. I saw his face. It's the same man who was in the photograph with you. A hidden camera. And the terrible thing, I was flattered. As Sam said, that's how they operate. This is a ring of blackmailers who prey on lonely women like her. A younger man stealing into my room, sweeping me into his arms. And getting your picture taken. Three for a quarter or one for $50,000. And as Honey said, the guy she gave the money to is the one who set her up because she saw his face when he lit a cigarette. Fair notice, it's 1965, pretty much everybody smokes. Honey's a smoker herself. It was the common thing, and to watch and enjoy these older shows, it's something we have to grit our teeth and put up with. But they will come up with one clue as to where to find him, because after he lit the cigarette, he dropped the matchbook. And it just might have the name of the place where these guys hang out and choose their victims. Got it. 
Royal Manor. Dust off the expense account, Sam. We're going on a vacation. The Royal Manor is one of those upscale resorts where the idle rich like to hang out and where the idle not-so-rich try to put the touch on the idle rich. The arrival of Mrs. E.J. Jones does not go unnoticed. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Again, 1965. The thing is, the rich, good-looking women like she's pretending to be kind of got off on that stuff. They liked having such an effect on men that a lot of those guys couldn't get out of the pool for a few minutes. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, man, I do. How do I get the meter? That's Fort Knox on the roof, boys. I could use some bullion, Mike, right now. Do you, um, you think she's got an anchor? They always throw out their anchors for me, baby. Why is there always a creep like you around? The same reason there's always a creep like you around. As if we weren't all thinking that same thing at the same time. Hey, barkeep. Let me have another martini on my tab. Carstairs, the name. Touch Carstairs. Okay, I know I said these guys are here to put the touch on the rich ladies, but I think if it was me, I'd try to be a little less obvious about it. Meanwhile, Mrs. Jones is settling into her room. Just so we remain friends, here's 50. Split it. Thank you. That's equal to about $400 today. For that kind of tip, I'll gladly be her friend. Let me do that. I'm good at it. Peekaboo, I see you. Yes, she has a two-way radio in her compact. His radio is in those sunglasses. He has to send the lady away and pull up an antenna to answer. <clears throat> You're coming on strong, baby. Careful, don't overplay it. You're on with touch car steers, boy swing. Sam, I just noticed you're gaining weight. Ho, ho, ho. 20 minutes, the number is 484-3000. More sensitive condenser microphones had only been developed three years earlier, so Honey probably couldn't afford to put one in the glasses. So he has to take them off and make it look like he's trying to eat them, because that's not weird at all. Sam, the lawmen were here when I came in. The hotel's got a lid on it. Murder? You're a born cynic. Accident, some guy fell in a tub. I wonder if that'll have anything to do with our story. Honey, are you with me? Neck and neck. Where now, Mrs. Jones? Where else the gossip shop? For reasons I can't fathom, he won't actually say anything. He'll just sit there and stare at her until the scene changes. For the gossip shop, read, it's time to get a massage and talk too much. Oh, it feels so good to get away by myself. Not that EJ is in good company. But there's more to life than just cuddling up with the Wall Street Journal. Beautiful ring. It's all right for casual wear. All the really good stuff is at home in the safe, of course, along with her husband, who's worth... A couple of million bucks. Yeah. And it's 25 years older than she is. <laughs> well, she was like a real swinger. Well, check her out. Like that you can to cash, private bank accounts, usual, but you got it. He'll have someone do the basic background check, but he's ready to move on her. Gee, Mom, nobody makes pastry like you. <laughs> yep, the masseuse is not only his mother, she's the brains of the operation. You know, this place was strictly a minus up until you got here. Now the lights are on. Are they? I'm afraid we haven't met. Everybody calls him Sonny, but the name to remember is Touch Costas. How touching. Please do. Sonny seems like an appropriate name for a criminal mama's boy. Touch will dominate Mrs. Jones's dance card for the rest of the evening, leaving Sonny rather unhappy. He disappeared in a hurry last night. I waited for you to come back. That's sweet. She only seems to have eyes for Touch, though. You don't want to get mixed up with him. He's a resort bum. You should have told me that last night. Well, that's the way it is, huh? These things never last long. What are you doing? Give you the brush? Yes. She says, that's never happened to me before. Would you please talk to him? I'd just like to know why he did it. 
While Sonny goes off to talk with Touch, a waiter brings Mrs. Jones her morning coffee and the paper. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. Good morning. Your morning paper and coffee. Thank you. It's double shot time. She has a radio and her sunglasses too, and she's on it telling Sam that the waiter is one of the blackmailers. And there's more trouble in the newspaper. The one I gave the money to in the alley. It's the pickup man. Play for keeps, Sam. They killed him. Maybe it's time to cut this vacation short. Sonny goes to touch car stairs and says, let's talk in private. Honey will want to listen in, and to that end, she has an olive in her purse. Boy talk? Boy talk. So I'll always be near you. Thanks, babe. I'll be on the shady side. The shady side is right. Do I need to mention that it's really a microphone and transmitter? Our Honey West uses almost as many gadgets as that guy who took down Dr. No in 1962. What was his name? Jimmy something or other. No, that's not right. Oh, it'll come to me. Right now, let's hear what Sonny has to say. Thanks to Honey's microphone, we can all hear it. You, uh, you left her at four this morning. What did you do, take pictures? Not rearranged. <laughs> Who needs you? I've got the setup. Like Bella? Huh? Why not? She's asking for it. Um, no. She's asking for a good time. She's not asking to be blackmailed for it. But this is art reflecting reality because this stuff did happen and still does. And since women didn't have all the rights they have today, for example, in many places a married woman couldn't have a bank account in her own name, her husband's name had to be on it, a woman like Honey is posing as made an easy target. All right, it's a deal. 50-50, huh? Now, what did you do that for? 20% take it or leave it. All right, I'd like to have my picture taken. I feel like Sam, excuse me, Touch, agreed a little too readily, but it doesn't seem to bother Sonny. And you get the feeling Sam is biding his time until he can return that little favor. I don't pay for your vacations. What are you doing here? What are you do for a vacation? In jail, if you don't play this one right. If that's your idea of a joke, I don't think it's funny. There is no Mrs. E.J. Jones of Beverly Hills. Well, where you've been looking? For a private eye, you don't see very good. That's the guy who's been doing the background check. He keeps telling Sonny he's being played, but Sonny won't believe it. He says, check this woman out. She's right outside there. That's your Mrs. E.J. Jones? That's right, and I see about 150 grand cool take. I see Honey West, private eye. <laughs> That man over there, that's her partner, Sam Bolt. He says, I recommend you drop this whole thing and leave town because if she's checking you out, she will bring you down. We got trouble, Sonny. We got trouble. Right here in River City, I mean Royal Manor, with a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for prison. Sonny runs to Mama with the news. We can't risk another killing here. Why don't we just drop it and blow it? Hey, why don't we just drop it, huh? It's too risky. How much do they know? Plenty. That West Dame and her partner, they're rough to handle. All right. We'll do it at my house. Good. Since it's your house, that means you can clean up the mess. But, Mom, we can't do it at the no, house. No, we... Sonny. I know you'll do what Mother says. Why do I get the feeling his real name is Oedipus? These interruptions spoil my buildup. Everything's all set for tonight. Good. I hate long runs. But not here. Take my car. And here's the address. Because that's not going to look suspicious to a trained detective, right? He and Honey are driving to the place, but something isn't right. Sam, turn the motor off for a second. Let it coast. Most cars at this time didn't have power steering, so you could get away with that. I'm being tailed. He's got no lights. There's only one thing to do. Go confront him as only Honey West can. You're from the hotel, aren't you? Yeah. 
Well, that touch of car stairs is a madman. Could you take me back? Sure, I'll give you a ride. Only uh, I have to stop someplace first, though. Thank you. I'll see you get a good tip. <laughs> I twisted my ankle. Walking on asphalt and heels can do that to you. Let me help you. <laughs> By the way, she may have exaggerated the ankle problem just a little. Between her and Sam, they wrap him up, handcuff him, and toss him in the back seat of his car and throw away the keys. But not before Sam convinces him to reveal the whole plan. Let's go mess it up. Will you play linebacker for me? You bet. Now, you be careful. You know me. Yeah, I know. Well, at least you're dressed for the occasion. Don't tent the pearls. I wonder what that means. The instant she walks in the door, she's in trouble. Touch, darling. You can fix the tire later. Okay, doll, I'll be right in. I'll just take the tools out. All right, Wes, back away from the door. We'll wait for him together. Mom appears and they say, call your partner in and play it like Mrs. Jones. Fine, that's what she'll do. Touch, darling. You're keeping me waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Jones wears smoke bomb earrings and her garter is a gas mask, by the way. I'm guessing your private detective didn't tell you that part. With Sonny and Mama both incapacitated by the smoke, it's a simple matter to subdue them. <laughs> Okay, maybe not that simple, but I have a feeling Sam enjoyed that. I owed him that one anyway. As I said, in the epilogue, we meet a couple of new characters. Well, you're playing again. Isn't that sweet? Hey, who's the fella? This is Mainwaring. We're going to lunch. <coughs> oh. Oh. Easy, Bruce. That's no fair. Two against one. Bruce is an ocelot. That's a kind of cat. That's as much as we know. The lady is Aunt Meg. She's a human. That's as much as we know. You know, there's one thing you must understand, honey. You have to let the man win once in a while. Believe me, Aunt Meg, you're looking at a sore loser. And she likes her dreadful puns, just like that guy who took on the Spectre organization in From Russia With Love in 1962. What was his name? You know, the one who stopped Goldfinger from destroying Fort Knox and kept Spectre from blackmailing the world with a couple of nuclear bombs and Thunderball. You know, that guy. The big question here was, is the world, more specifically American TV viewers, ready for a female version of James Bond? That's his name. I knew I'd pull it out sooner or later. As for Honey West, the gadgetry kind of got downplayed a lot more as the series went on, though she still has her moments, as we'll see. How about the story, the acting, all that? I liked it. We see Honey using her natural talents, so to speak, to insinuate her way into places that someone like Sam can't. But she's not even remotely the brainless blonde she will often pretend to be. She misses almost nothing, okay, except some guy coming up behind her with a big club, and when she's on the job, all her senses are on full alert. I didn't find the gadgets overdone. In fact, her most useful gadgets are her various communicators, and stuff like that is easily believable in a series like this. The show is off to a good start. Initial ratings could have been better, but it ran opposite Gomer Pyle USMC, which at the time was one of the most popular shows on television. That time slot could have been a mistake. Could the show have done better in a different spot? There's no way to know as far as I can see, it's a good show. We'll see if it kept up the quality as we go along. For now, I'm Irving. This is TV Fails. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.